Hello, and welcome to Real Person Reviews. I'm Sam, and I'm a real person. And today I want to talk to you about uh, Doom 3. Um, it's uh, Obviously I'm playing the Nintendo Switch version. Now this game originally came out, the original Doom 3 came out um, in 2004. In fact, I actually looked it up. It came out on August 3rd, 2004, on my birthday. I mean... The actual day I was born, I was, uh, I was, the, not the year, just the, the day, I was born in 92. Anyway, well, I thought, well, that would be interesting to have my, my first ever, like, review, playthrough, experience thing of this game be, you know, for a 20-year retrospective of sorts, I guess. I mean, it's not, like, you know, really retrospective if it's my first time really doing it. Um, and just the full stuff up front here to kind of mention about this, going into this, I'll probably have a bit more detail in the written one, but essentially... Um, so Doom 3 originally came out in 2004, and then there was the Doom 3, uh, BFG edition that came out, um, in 2012, uh, which included both, uh, the Resurrection of Evil DLC that came out for the original Doom 3, uh, and also a, a new set of expansion, or I guess expansion, DLC, whatever, a new set of levels as well, uh, called The Lost Mission, which was basically... Uh, levels from the original game that like got got cut and they kind of reworked those into a campaign um all those came to the doom 3 bfg edition which is something actually i had on pc but could never actually run the actual doom 3 game on it um the bfg edition also had doom and doom 2 on it as well uh but uh in 2019 they um basically put this on modern systems and they had these all separated so you can get just doom 3 which is the bfg version basically but on modern systems um, and, uh, I'm basing this, again, off of this Switch version that I have. Um, it's probably fairly similar on most platforms, but just if there's anything weird or different, I mean, this maybe had more frame dips than some other ones do. There's a few areas where it's a little bit choppy, but it doesn't affect gameplay, so there's that. So I just wanted to put that out there and, and kind of have that be a disclaimer that I haven't been playing this for years. This is really my first time. Well, I did play through it once, and then the main game part, and then I waited months on it, so I replayed through it on stream, which you maybe have already seen. I've played through all this on stream. Uh, and there'll probably be links to that crap in the description, too. And there's a written review in the description, all that good stuff. But let's get to talking about, uh, Doom 3. So, Doom 3, uh, is the third Doom installment, or at least the third major one in the, in the line of, uh, the first-person shooter games, uh, here at the Doom series. And, um, uh, this one starts off where you're, uh... You're basically a marine that I think has been... You have, like, disciplinary action taken against you, so you're sent to this Mars base to help with security and all that, because there's been some problems uh, with uh, security and uh, safety and stuff uh, on this Mars base. Um, so you're you're going through, and they give you a little quick, you know, here's how you play with the basics. Uh, here's, you know, here's your guns. You get your arsenal of weapons. Whatever. You can kind of switch guns. You can have a flashlight. That's a shoulder-mounted thing. The biggest d change from the original Doom 3 is that, yes, you have... Um, a shoulder-mounted uh, flashlight instead of having the flashlight be a, 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 a weapon in your cycle. So instead of having to choose between seeing what you can't shoot or shooting what you can't see, in this version, you uh, get to just look at stuff all the time. Um, then there's... Um, uh, yeah, it shows you how to, you know, you know run, jump, crouch, uh, and switch weapons and shoot and all that stuff. The basic stuff you would do. Um, it's just you still have a full arsenal of weapons here, unlike more more modern modern or <laughs> first person shooters i guess um so it's still you know kind of in that in between period where they were kind of changing things up a little bit but you can look up and down and stuff now so you know, that that's new um <laughs> that's a thing uh and you have to reload your weapons and then, you know so there's some things that are a little different from the classic doom games in that sense um Another uh, big aspect of this you'll be finding out very quickly is that you have this PDA you'll have to constantly pull up for various things to see your objectives. You can uh, listen to audio logs and read people's emails. Um, something you'll probably need for uh, gathering codes to open up locked doors and security cabinets to you know find supplies and things um, and just generally progress. Um, and... Uh, uh, just also building, you know, the lore and, and, and whatnot. Uh, and, uh, pretty shortly into the game, you will come across a situation you're, you're asked to go investigate. And, uh, all of a sudden, some weird stuff starts happening, and, uh, oh no, demons have shown up. And, uh, now it's up to you, basically, to start, uh, killing demons and trying to reunite, you know, 
with your uh, other marine buddies um or space marine pals that are leaving you want to reunite with them because uh, all hell is breaking loose in the station people are getting killed left and right and people are trying to get out of there um and so you'll slowly unfold what's really happening with a lot of that and the experiments and things that have been going on at this lab um as you're going through i don't want to spoil too much plot stuff that's in there um but uh You'll very quickly be trying to escape there and get away, trying to blow your way through demons with your different weapons, um, and finding your way through areas, uh, through this big, big, you know, big base on Mars. Um, and, uh, you'll notice a lot of recurring, you know, like, there are recurring weapons, uh, that you're used to, like a pistol or a shotgun, but a lot of them have been reworked. Like I say, a lot of them have to be reloaded, but they all have their own ammo uh, in them, uh, the ammo types to work with. Um, and then, uh, uh, for the enemies, um, there are, again, a lot of uh, old enemies uh, you'll, you'll recognize, but they'll behave a little bit differently, they'll look a little bit different. Um, there's also some new weapons and enemies for you to find uh, as well along the way. Um, and so, uh, I mean, a lot of this is basically a lot of going around, exploring, shooting stuff, um, finding secrets, looking around, you know, in dark areas with your flashlight, trying to find where you're supposed to go, trying to find the best way to fight through enemies. Um, and, you know, you have health and armor and ammo pickups along the way. You also have, like, a limited amount of stamina when you're running, but you can get an adrenaline pickup that will temporarily make us have an infinite sprint. Eventually in the game, you will also come across something called the Soul Cube, um, which is kind of particular to mention because the way it works is essentially you get enough kills, and then the Soul Cube has a charge, and then you can throw the Soul Cube at an enemy to do massive damage and also give you life back. Um, so there is that kind of a fairly new, unique weapon to this. Uh, uh, to this. And... Um, uh, then you go on to, after doing that, I mean, like, spoiler, eventually you will go to hell, because it's Doom, so obviously you're going to go there, but just, I just thought I'd throw that out there. Um, but, uh, eventually you do that, and you'll, you'll, there's some interesting boss fights in here as well. Again, I don't want to spoil anything, but, uh, there definitely are a number of boss fights, a number of, like, uh, in introduction scenes for the different enemies and things and whatnot, so you'll... You know, and there's some cut scenes and, you know, like I said, audio logs and emails and things for, like, all the world building and the, the, you know, some of the more cinematic elements to it. While it's being a, more of a horror game of, like, you know, spooky noises and things happening and darkness and shadows and whatnot. Then, uh, Resurrection of Evil, the first uh, expansion, um, uh, takes place after the events of the original game. Where, essentially, you go back to the Mars base. Uh, it's a different, uh, I believe it's a different marine. Uh... And, uh, ends up finding this weird artifact. Um, basically replaces the slot where the Soul Cube was. Um, and this artifact allows you to slow down time for a little bit. Um, uh, and to build up charges on that, you can have up to three charges on that. But you have to absorb, like, dead bodies that are sitting around to get more charges. Um, and that can be used either to... Mostly it's used either to get through, uh, some speed-based, like, puzzles where things slow down so you can go through... Or to be for combat, um, so you can, um, you know, go quickly and either do lots of damage to, like, a, a large enemy or be able to thin out a, a tricky, you know, mob of enemies and just kind of go and take out them without them being able to all move around and attack you at once. Um, it also, uh, introduces, um, a few other things. It introduces a grabber weapon, uh, which can pick up, like, objects and throw those to throw at enemies. Um, it also, uh, can grab enemy projectiles and throw those back at them as well. Um, uh, and it has a mechanic where you can pick up these, um, these energy cell things, basically, and move them from one machine to another to power different things to try and get through. Again, kind of more of, like, a puzzle-solving kind of thing, challenge -y kind of thing. Um, and then, uh, the other weapon that's new here is a double-barrel shotgun which does share ammo with the regular shotgun. And with this, that um, you only get um, one shot per... Um, well, per shot, whatever. You get one shot before you have to reload. It, but it uses it uses two shotgun shells, but it does do massive damage at close range. Um, and, uh, yeah, basically the idea is you're taking this artifact and you're using it to... Uh, 
uh, I, I guess I forget what the, actually the plot description of it. Basically, the idea is you're, you're taking this artifact and you're trying to use it to your advantage somehow to stop things with demons in hell. Is essentially the idea. Um, uh, and then uh, the other expansion, The Lost Mission, um, is uh, somewhat similar. Again, it's based around uh, levels that were cut from the original game, but um, it does bring back uh, the, the double barrel shotgun, the grabber gun uh, into here as well. Uh, but there and the you know the the thing of like moving the energy cells to different stuff to power those sources, but um, there are there's no artifacts and there's no soul cube, um, and it's so it's a little more like just straightforward going through levels. Um, and uh, the plot there essentially is that um, this happens around the same time as the events like in the the main game, um, where you're being tasked of finding this, um, the, basically the demons have, uh, commandeered a teleporter, and they're trying to use that long-range teleporter to be able to teleport themselves directly to Earth, so you have to try and stop them from doing that. Um, you have to go locate that teleporter, and then destroy it, and stop them from being able to, to come back. Um, or it's to come to Earth, whatever. Um, that's the main idea of that. So, that's all that in this one package, uh, right here. Um, and, uh, there's definitely a lot that I really like about this, and I think that, uh, the biggest things that I think I really appreciate about Doom 3 here when I was playing through this are, um, one of the big ones is, I think that the weapons and the enemies are the two biggest things, I think, that I really, really enjoy here, because, um, for one thing, the enemies are all a threat, um, all of them, uh, like, even something that used to be, like, you know, in the other Doom games, you have, like, you know, the imp is, like, whatever. You shoot them, like, once and they're down. Like, they're, like, no, they're kind of just, like, fodder for your for your weapons, right? But in here, um, the imps, they can do these, like, things where they you know, lunge at you. They can crawl all over stuff. They're pretty fast. They can throw their projectiles. And sometimes they'll lead you with their throws. Sometimes they'll kind of wait and not throw it right away. They'll kind of wait a second or two before they throw it to kind of catch you off guard. Um, so they're a little bit uh, more... Uh, I mean, it's not like they're super deadly, but they definitely are more of a threat here than before. They've even added an enemy in here that's um, actually like uh, almost like a weaker kind of enemy. They've got these zombies that uh, really can't do anything except for walk up to you and hit you like if they get close enough to you. And they're very slow. But with them, they're usually putting those around corners or putting them, you know, like, like around the corner in dark areas or, you know, just having them kind of like open up, up around you and... Um, so everything is like a threat, um, and uh, there's also, I like that the weapons all feel like they're kind of useful. Again, in other Doom games, I feel like I was kind of just using, you know, the same, like, one or two weapons the whole time, and not to say that I didn't still do that here, but, like, because weapons don't share the same ammo pool, um, there is reason to use different weapons for different situations, and some stuff is good for close range or long range or groups of enemies or certain kinds of enemies, right? And so, like, I feel like there's a lot more use for the different kinds of weapons that you have, and I feel like that that really helps to make it feel like you're actually using your arsenal rather than just, like, you know, using a couple guns here and there because they're the most effective for the ammo you're getting. Um, also, I think the game does a really good job of, like, earning a lot of the stuff that it does. Um, it, I, I like that it earns... Um, it's, it's like, the horror part of this, right? Because there's, like, you know, the idea of, like, jump scares and stuff like that. That's, that's like, okay, whatever, uh, there's a noise or a shadow or something. I'm like, oh, geez, it got me. But, like... It wouldn't just be, like, a startling thing. It's not just that, like, oh, a noise caught me off guard or a thing popped up in my face or whatever. It's that, like, you know, a musical sting happened. It's that um, there's, like, it's that you know there are, the enemies are a threat. So you can't just be like, ah, whatever. It, it's just, it's, it may be a thing, maybe it's a red herring. I don't know. It doesn't matter because if you're not, like, if you're not, like, paying attention to the stuff, you're going to pay for it. Enemies will be a threat. They will hurt you if you allow them. They, they will get you. Um, and that's, that's kind of the thing, right? So it's like, if you don't flash your flashlight in the corner, a zombie could easily be there and, like, you know, and hit you. Um, if you see, like, something, like, you hear something out of, like, you know, come off from, like, off the distance, you're like, ah, whatever, it's probably just the game, and then an enemy's there, and they hit you. It's like, oh, shit, I should have, should have, you pay attention to that, you know? Um, you never really know if it's just, like, if it's the if it's real, or if it's the game fucking with you, or if it's your paranoia fucking with you. And I think that works really well to go on, like, the kind of the horror element here, and it really earns the, the scares that it gives you. Um, uh, there's, like, 
there's that. Also, like I said, like the the pacing, I think, is pretty good in a sense of like it slowly tries to build up the world and tell you what things are happening here. Um, but then, like, uh, you do eventually get into like stuff sort of ramps up and gets a little crazier and crazier, and you get to hell, and hell is like hell is crazy. Like it's it's not as probably as mind melting as it was when it was like 2004 and you were seeing this shit. But it's still, Hell is, like, really, really cool, the way the stuff, like, the visuals of it, and the way, like, you can go into Hell, and it's, like, it's open. It's, like, a much more open place in a lot of ways, and a lot of places, and it's got a lot more stuff visually going on with the architecture and the special effects happening, and there's just demons that are just spawning in all over the place, and, um, the level's, like, shifting around you and stuff, and it kind of just feels like, you know, it feels like you're just kind of being, like, led into, like, where you're ultimately going to die. It's like, hell is just leading me to, to dying, is what it feels like. And it's, 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 it's crazy, and it's, it's awesome. Um, so it does a really good job of, like, earning those moments. And also, with, like, the, the double barrel shotgun, I love that. I love that gun um, that they added in the expansions. Uh, uh, because before, there are a lot of enemies where, like, again, like, again, like it earns itself in that, like, it earns its the satisfaction of using it by playing the entire main game first and then going to the expansions and you're like oh cool like now i have a gun finally that does actually treat some enemies like fodder like the smaller weaker enemies you can go up to them and shoot them in the face with like a the, the double barrel shotgun and they're dead right like it feels so satisfying after having to deal with everybody so like you know like carefully before it just feels really good especially in lost missions where there's no like no soul cube no artifact it just really feels like running around with that shotgun shooting once and reloading it's like the closest you're going to get to like classic doom feeling and i think it's cool that they added something like that in there and again they they, they do a really good job of like building the stuff up and really earning the payoff that they that they deliver there um so I do really like a lot of that stuff, and uh, just in general, like, it's admirable that they're trying to do something a bit different here with, like, making it a bit more, like, slow and more, like, a horror thing and, like, being a bit more, like, precision and doing stuff instead of just, like, kind of, like, running through and strafing and killing everything as quickly as possible or whatever, like, uh, I think they do a lot of this to, to great effect. Um, I do like that. Um... Uh, on the other hand, uh, as much as, like, a lot of the stuff is, like, really cool, and it's, like, again, some of the boss fights, too, are, like, really cool, the way they have, like, uh, interesting ways to, like, fight them as well. I think that's interesting. Um, but, uh, as impressive and cool as this is, and as much as I really do like it, there are some, th some things here that are kind of annoying, like, some stuff's not that big, like, there are a few sections where you can go out under the surface of Mars, but there's not that many sections like that, and they're always annoying because you have to, like, you have limited oxygen, you have to pick up, like, oxygen tanks as you're running through, and it's like, you don't really get any time to, like, sit there and actually enjoy the change of scenery that you get because you have to keep moving, and there's, like, very few of them, so it's, like, a really weird, like, I wish they just had, didn't have those sections or didn't have you have to, like, pick up oxygen tanks for them, you know? It's just, it's kind of frustrating to be, like, something new and interesting. Let's get out of here as quickly as possible. Um, that's kind of frustrating. Or, um, weirdly, there's a thing where, like, you know, when you go into hell, um, like, well, basically when you're in the normal areas, uh, when you run, you have, like, a stamina meter for running, and you hit the, uh, L3, or whatever, to, like, toggle it, but, like, whatever, left stick, whatever, um, you hit that to, like, toggle it on and off, um, for running, and when, it, when you run out of stamina, then, like, it's just your run is off until you toggle it back on again. Um, but when you get into hell, you have infinite stamina, but you have to hold down the, the button to, like, this, hold down the stick button to, like, keep running, and there's no way to, like, map it to anything else as far as I could see when I was playing, so that was, like, frustrating, like, why can't I put it to something else that's easier to hold while I'm moving? Um, that's, like, a weird, uh, pet peeve thing as well, a, a mild annoyance. Uh, it, I don't know, it's, it's like, some of these things aren't real big. Uh, I think the things that annoyed me more were things like the pacing. While I do think it's good for making the game feel like it has more weight and gravity to its situations and earning the stuff, like, payoffs later, replaying, I was like, it still feels slow. It's it's annoying to sit here and have to go into your PDA constantly to read emails, listen to audio logs, to get numbers, to open up doors and cabinets and shit. And it's, um, it's annoying to have to keep turning a flashlight on and off all the time in these areas. It's annoying to, like... Um, have to, like, wait so long until you get to the actually, like, fun action, meat and potatoes of, like, killing stuff. That's a thing. Um, also, I feel like the super shotgun and the later stuff, sort of, or whatever, double barrel shotgun, it's basically the super shotgun. It does sort of, um, the downside to that is that it, it does make the regular shotgun kind of, like, useless, because, like, when am I ever going to use that shotgun when they're using the same ammo? The only weapon that uses the same ammo. They also give you grenades, and they're pretty useless, um... 
You know, there are very few situations where the grenades are going to be useful. They give you a chainsaw. Again, if you're getting right up next to something anyways, uh, you might as well just be out of ammo at that point. And even the grabber gun kind of makes that almost useless, except for if there's nothing to throw at enemies, I guess. Um, the grabber gun feels a little gimmicky. I rarely used it, other than the couple places where I had to. Um, and I feel like the artifact for slowing down time is also kind of gimmicky because they only used it a couple of times for, like, the, you know, s slow speed challenge things, whatever, and then, like, the, that was it. Um, so some of the stuff does feel, like, a little gimmicky and, like, weird and out of place, um, for sure. Um, and uh, even also, like, weirdly in the expansions, the uh, Resurrection of Evil seemed to not have much for audio logs. I kind of skimped on that. Um, but I guess, like, they're, they, they, they at least kind of shied away a bit from using your PDAs and stuff and world building as much in the expansions, I guess, because they probably realized the stage is already set. You've already probably played the main Doom 3 game, so you already have that, that stage set for you. You know what's going on. Um, we don't need to bore you with too much of that. Um, so... Uh, there's that and uh, also probably the biggest thing for uh, some people out there who, who are really invested in story stuff I couldn't tell you what exactly the fuck is going on with the story in this game either for the endings all the endings are a little like weird and vague for some stuff and it's like I don't really know what it means or if they're opening the door for more games or more additions or what um, but none of them feel that satisfying in like the ending cutscene thing um, which is also maybe coupled a bit with some of the audio mixing feels weird as well, right? For like, it will lack some of the punch when it's like sometimes the music or the sound effects or something or the voice things are like either too loud or too quiet uh, in the mix of like what's happening and it feels like the punch is kind of lost on some of those. But uh, when it comes down to it for Doom 3, I gotta say that, um, like, like you, as you probably just heard, I have a lot of things to say about this. It's just a game that I think is really interesting. I think that if you played the classic Doom games, you do owe it to yourself to play Doom 3 to see where they went in this different direction. See how they really, they did a really good job with this game. Even if you don't like it and the things they decided to do, I mean, it's not like classic Doom. It's not going to feel like more classic Doom, but that's kind of the point. They had done a bunch of classic Doom stuff already, and they wanted to do something different. And I think that what they've done here is good for what it is. And, like, even for some of the stuff that I don't even care for in those choices, I still think that what they ended up doing and pulling off with this, what they actually earned, the payoff um, they got here was really, really good. They really did a, a good job with, like, putting this together, I think. It's, um... Definitely better than I thought it was going to be, especially for how resistant I was at the start. Um, I also forgot to mention, I just realized this now, uh, there's also the platforming complaint. If you fall from anything more than like a foot, you're going to take massive damage uh, and a little bit further and you'll just straight up die. So the platforming sucks in this, but you don't have to do that much either. So mark that under the mild annoyance thing, but I try my best to get all these things out of me as I could. The point is this is a good game, okay? This is pretty good. This is impressive. This is cool. And I think anybody who is, you know, been playing a bunch of Doom games and you're looking like, oh, well, what's the next Doom game I want to play? If, or do I want to check this out? I think this is a good game to check out. I think it's worthwhile to check out for the historical purposes. And if you just like good, you know, like first person shooters, like this is a, a solid game, especially if you're into the stuff that it does. I think you will really like Doom 3. Um, uh, so anybody, you know, when people are kind of poo pooing this game, I can understand that if they're just classic Doom fans, but if you're a fan of, like, the idea of some of these things here, you'll probably like this game. You'll, so, um, yes, I would recommend it. Um, even if it's not quite my cup of tea, it still won me over in a lot of ways. And it's worth looking at and thinking about and talking about, for sure. Um, so I was really excited to do this review. And now I'm actually pretty interested to see Doom 2016, which I probably will stream next since I, I streamed all of this on, on stream. That's redundant. But uh, <laughs> it... People seem to be enjoying watching this, and they're saying, like, yeah, maybe check that one out. And I've heard everyone already say that Doom 2016 is good, but I wanted to play this first. So I have that also on Switch. I'll probably play that sometime in the near future here. Uh, hopefully I get this out on my birthday, so it is the 20-year anniversary of Doom 3 to make this make sense. And hopefully it was somewhat interesting to see uh, someone who's played this just for the first time talk about this, even though people have probably talked about this to death. Um... Probably didn't expect me to be like, this is this is actually good. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm I as shocked as you are that I came out at the other end of this being like, you know, from, from the start, uh, being like, I don't know about this. And by the end, I'm like, okay, this was pretty good. <laughs> For something that's not my cup of tea and it's still pretty good, that's pretty cool. Hopefully, Doom 2016 will be like, wow, it's as good as everyone says. I, I'm, I'm hoping that is what happens. And I have pretty high hopes. Um... I said hope twice there, too. I'm really good with words. I'm good at saying them. 
and also speaking them as well. Anyways, I'll see you in hell, or Mars, or whatever, next, or later, or whatever. I wish I knew how to end anything.